encouraging thing, to encourage those who have started the work. And those who started the work should be encouraged. But it also contains you know, a message. A good start is only half the work. Now the rest is to come, to be done. And I firmly believe Northern Ireland has become a cold house for Catholics. Lord Cameron put it rather more prosaically in his 1969 report to the Northern Ireland government when he spoke of a rising sense of continuing injustice and grievance among large sections of the Catholic population in Northern Ireland and non-nationalist in outlook and purpose, there was a frank recognition that this widespread sense of grievance among the Catholic people of Northern Ireland was justified in fact and called for urgent need and operative cause of the demonstrations. The early champions of human rights and of civil rights came from right across the traditional religious and political divide. They believed that only when Northern Ireland and indeed Ireland was free from the politics of sectarianism would its truest and its best potential ever be revealed. They believed in non-violence. They believed in peaceful pro protest. They believed in the politics of persuasion. They spoke, to quote another laureate Nobel of this city, Seamus Heaney, well certainly of this county. They spoke from the canton of expectation. Theirs, as he says, the new age of demands. Theirs, he also says memorably, intelligences brightened and unmannerly as crowbars. And these were, individually and collectively, as Heaney says, the one among us who never swerved from all his instincts told him was right action, who stood his ground. John Hume was, is, one such man. Edwina Stewart, one such woman. So too the late legendary Claude Wilton, Eddie McIntyre, Reifenbar, Paddy Devlin, Jerry Fitt, we think of Dr. Khan and Patricia McCluskey, still going strong, Austin Curry, Ivan Cooper, <coughs> Eamon McCann, Michael Farrell, Dennis Hawhey, Bernadette McCallisky, Seamus Mallon. I shouldn't have started a list, should I? It's an awful thing to do to start a list. But that's all I've done, I've just started a list. Every one of you could continue that list and continue it on. And I hope maybe just in naming those few and starting that list, that we will between us call to memory all those others who set out 40 years ago at enormous personal cost to create a Northern Ireland and indeed to create an island of Ireland where every man, woman, and child, Protestant and Catholic, Unionist and Nationalist or indeed none of the above would share full equality of citizenship, that that would be their lived experience Today, the institutions and the structures of the Good Friday and St Andrews Agreements and the framework of human rights legislation which underpin those agreements, these provide a sound basis for that equality of citizenship and importantly for the growth and development of relationships of mutual respect and good neighbourliness within Northern Ireland, between North and South, and between Ireland and Britain. So much has changed these 40 years. The once very fraught relationship between Great Britain and Ireland is now very collegial, very friendly. The once mistrustful cross-border relationship has thawed visibly and a still very, very young and impressively, impressively diverse administration in Northern Ireland is working to find its feet in a new culture to grow really from seed a new culture of peaceful partnership a radical shift from the very recent old culture of conflict 
there is much learning and there is much unlearning for every single person in these processes. There is also so much to be gained from patience, persistence, and above all, perseverance. We all know the cost of failure, for it is long since written on the tombstones of the too many dead, and in the hearts of the injured, the bereaved, and the despairing. In his Smithsonian speech in Washington, D.C. in June of 2007, First Minister Peter Robinson observed, As I stand here and look towards the Lincoln Memorial, I am reminded of the suffering of the United, the United States experienced and the strong nation that emerged following its civil war. He then quoted Abraham Lincoln, A house divided against itself cannot stand. Though to some it did not appear so, back in 1968 the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association was about the business of ending wasteful sectarian divisions that had made Northern Ireland a house divided against itself. It was about the business of creating one shared one proud narrative for all those who live here. Today that task is now well underway. And I want to wish First Minister Peter Robinson and Deputy First Minister Martin McGuinness, who is with us, every success as they and their colleagues in government set their faces firmly towards what has to be a shared future. We can see we can see very clearly that theirs is no easy task. But when we consider the extent of change already achieved, of the sacrifices and the compromises made on all sides, we take courage and we take hope. Today at this conference, we look back in gratitude to those who first introduced us to the possibility and the potential of that courage, of that hope. We look back, but there is absolutely no turning back, no going back. A critical mass of the people of Northern Ireland, loyalist, republican, unionist, nationalist, Catholic, Protestant, have indeed at last begun to overcome. There's a lovely old Irish expression that says, to smite, is Latin Hitler. A good start is half the work. It's a mention and believe with great optimism that the best is yet to come. Thank you to all of you for a real and a President Mandelise um, put her stamp on what was a very, uh, I'm not going to say very much, the contribution was very inspirational and reminds us what still has to be done. And I said, what do you know? Well, she said she came and I was in a cross-community scheme with people. Uh, we can believe that today, this is my first meeting with her. Now we have a lot to do and I'm not going to list it. We have overcome and Martin, we're all a wee bit worried about our electricity bills and our gas bills and our water bills and our rate bills and the bread bills. So uh, don't forget about that Martin or anybody else who can do anything about it.